Prime the pill, Johnny Hawks, man. Hi everyone, Brybone here. Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Purple Team. This week, we're taking a look at a concept I call vibe hacking. We're going to throw together a pen test bot, if you will. What we're going to use, we're going to use Claude Code, which you see here, Claude Code. You simply have to have an account with Anthropic. You probably want to make sure you have a private account and you're not training the model on the data that you're using, but you need Claude code. And then you're going to need VS code, which is Microsoft Visual Studio code, simple application. And then we're gonna simply load a little extension in there called Klein. Klein can hook into all sorts of different AIs all over the internet. You can do OpenAI, you can do Anthropic, you can do uh, Olama, whatever you choose to do, you can do with these tools. So let's take a look at this. We're going to do a couple of red scenarios and then we'll do a blue scenario, typical purple team fashion. But this could be useful for many pen testers out there, especially the junior pen testers. Some of you don't have a lot of experience. This can help you get through some of these things, especially if you want to see something done in the lab, the bot can show you how to do that. So we're going to jump over here to Kali Linux. And on Kali, I have my Klein setup and I have VS Code, which is what we're in. We're in VS Code. I have the Klein extension set up here. And I'm using Claude Code Sonnet. Okay, that's Anthropic's model. Now, if you want to know how to do this, you simply can install Claude Code. So it's an NPM install. And you just do Claude at the command line. Claude, just like that. And it's going to launch Claude code. It'll ask you, do you trust these files in the folder you're in? And then you can run things from Claude code as well right here. Now, the addition of Klein makes this easy and lets it do file analysis and in, an, in a nice interface in VS code. That's why we're using Klein. So let's jump over here. And let's just give the AI something to do, right? Now, this is the interesting part. If you're using Claude Online, right, it's going to refuse to do a lot of these red team things. Claude Code doesn't. So whatever I give it for a prompt, it'll mostly do it because it's doing it on your machine, right? And I'm doing this in a lab environment and you can tell it, yes, I'm in a lab environment. You don't have to be, but it knows that you're in a lab environment. Right? So you could do some forms of pen test automation, or if you're just simply lazy that day and you don't feel like going and digging out commands, you can use an AI to do your bidding. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna tell Claude to find all of the hosts that are on the network I'm on. I'm not gonna give it any information. It's gonna figure it all out right here and you'll see the commands go. So we'll just type this out, we'll go paste. And we're just going to tell it, tell it to organize by interesting port. It's going to say can't use checkpoints because I don't have a git in this folder. But we're going to let this roll. Now, I'm just going to get it to the point where it runs the command. And then I'm going to pause it because, well, you guys don't want to watch Nmap go. But then uh, it's going to come back and it's going to tell us all the information about this network. But notice what it's doing. It's sending an API request and there is finding the address of the network. It's finding our addresses here. And that's a pretty good command, right? Grep, op, look for it. And then it's running nmap. So there you go. And if you're an nmap expert, you know that this works. It's a bit verbose and a bit loud, but it works. So if you can interact with this while it's going from the command line. Notice when I hit space, it tells me how done it is. But it's going to do all this and it's going to bring it back and it's going to organize it for you. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to pause the video here so that we can let this complete. And then when it completes, I'll take you through the output. I'm going to do that on both of our red team scenarios because they may take a minute here to get through. But the fact that this works at all, pretty cool. All right, and we're back. 
I had to rerun it. It uh, errored in the middle, but it did the same thing. It did do a little different in-map command this time, but the results are exactly what you'd be looking for. So when all tasks completed, it's now given us a markdown uh, output of what it found. And what did it find? It found interesting ports, found the OSs, and it says the first thing is a domain controller, which this is correct. It is not server 2022, it's server 2025, but good enough. Here are the open ports. It could be interesting. Here's Windows 10. This is correct. There are the open ports. Notice, okay, WinRM. Maybe I could attack with WinRM. And then same thing here, right? Interesting ports, MSRPC, RDP on Windows 11. That is correct as well. And then there's a Linux system. That's my local machine. And these are the findings. So, pretty cool. That's our vibe discovery, right? Well, let's do a full attack. Let's let's escalate privileges. How about we do Kerber roasting, right? So let's do Kerber roasting. And then that'll wrap it up for our red team side of this. We'll start with this prompt right here. I'm going to do start new task. And I'm going to give it this prompt. And it's going to be, can you tell me if this domain is vulnerable to... Actually, that's not the right one. We'll do the Kerber roasting prompt. And paste that in. Can you Kerber roast the domain controller at 192.168.138.8? The username, Clint Barton. His password is attack. Use netexec for the Kerber roasting and crack the password with Hashcat. We're telling it exactly what we want it to do here. Now just realize those tools have to be installed on your system, but it will do this. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll execute this. It's going to give us our checkpoint error because once again, Git's not in this folder. And we probably need to clear our screen here. Just so you can see it. But here we go. It's going to perform curb roasting on the domain controller. Crack the obtained hashes. And it's breaking it down into steps, right? If you leave it in plan, it'll just tell you what it's going to do. But there's NetExec. Oh, there comes our hashes. Right, there's our SP and hash. And the next step is creating a file, curbrost hashes.txt, making sure they're formatted for hashcat. And it's running hashcat. And then it says, hey, I've already cracked this. And it should give us the output here in a minute. And there we go. And you can see it says service account web SVC. Our password is P at SSWORD1. Notice it didn't show you that from the command line, but you can interact here. So if we do now, if we just do dash dash show, there you go. You can see that is correct. It is password right there. And that is the user web service. So if we do user, same thing. We do show and then we'll do user and then show. Oh, we'll just show the user real quick. So there you go. Oh, didn't find it. Well, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> so, needless to say, if you do show, it's going to show you this is the password, the account. If we go look up here, you can see it is web service at hackinglab.com. So we have now vibe hacked a couple of things. We vibe discovered and we vibe escalated privileges. It can do basically anything you tell it to do, which is awesome, right? I could tell it to go do a certificate attack and it would do it. So on days where you're a red teamer and you're just lazy, you're like, I'm not feeling it today. AI is feeling it for you so it can help you get your job done. Now, okay, this is a purple team show. So now we're gonna do some blue things with this setup. What do blue teams do a lot? They do reversals. So let's do a reversal. And I'll go ahead and clear our screen here. And we're gonna do start a new task. But first we're gonna open a file. 
we're going to generate the file with Cobalt Strike. We're going to generate a beacon. So we'll do Cobalt Strike. We're going to do Stager Payload. We're going to give it the output of PowerShell Command. And then we're going to do HTTPS, right? Something an analyst would typically do. I'm going to drop this in our downloads folder. We're going to call it payload x64.txt. Then we're going to come back over here into VS Code. We're going to open that. So open our file. And then we're going to go into find payload x64.txt. We'll open that up. And then I'm going to view in word wrap just to give you an idea. This is a lot of base64. And this, for any of you who have done this before, is a two to three step reversal to get out the IP address that you can then block in your firewall. So what I'm going to ask it to do is I'm going to say reverse the PowerShell in the file and find the C2 IP address for me to block. And then I'm just going to tell it act and go. Once again, I'm going to give us our checkpoints error, but that doesn't mean anything. It's going to read the, the payload.txt and it's going to try to reverse engineer it. You may have to tell it, okay, you're allowed to read this because it's a different folder than it's in right now. And then there will be a point where you definitely, I'm going to pause it because this takes a while because it's multiple layers of PowerShell reversal here. But for those of you who do PowerShell reversals, this one is at least three steps. So let's see if Klein can get it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause right here and we'll come back once it's completed. All right. And we're back. So now we have our final reversal of that PowerShell Cobalt Strike Beacon. Just to give you guys an idea, I said earlier, reversing a Cobalt Strike Beacon is pretty challenging because of the steps, right? So if we come over here, I'll show you what this takes in CyberChef to do. This is our code. And if we start, it's one from base64, removing the null bytes, then a regular expression, looking for the second round of base64. <clears throat> Then another from base 64, then a Zor of 35. There's also a G unzip in here. And then finally, extract IP addresses. This is the exact same code. Notice it says 192.168.138.30. That is our Kali box here. If I go look in VS Code, it's telling me the C2 IP is 192.168.138.30. That it has four layers base 64, G zip, Zor encoded shell code with a key of 35. If you ever see that key of 35, you know it's Cobalt Strike. And then it is Meterpreter Cobalt Strike shellcode after that. So there's our Vibe Purple Team, a Vibe Reversal. Not bad. Use these tools for what they are. If you're in a hurry and you don't want to do these things manually, use them, right? Or if you're trying to learn, if you're trying to uh, ensure that you understand where not to use AI tools in cybersecurity, it's when you don't really know the answer, right? When you don't know how to get there yourself, you can't verify what's coming out of it. If you're in a situation where it's incident response, you can't get the expertise you need, okay, I get it, right? Use AI for what it's for, but it will make mistakes. It made a couple mistakes here while I was using it in this demo. But pretty cool. Uh, if you're lazy, you just want to have a tool do something for you versus you, hold on, let me cut and paste some commands in or do whatever. It's a pretty cool use of your time to set something like this up. It's great for learning because you can learn things in a lab without having to know it ahead of time. Just if you're going to use it in a production or you're going to use it in the real world, make sure that you have an expert that can verify what the AI is doing. All right. Cool. A little vibe hacking. And that's it for this week. Hack the planet to defend better. I'm a pill, tell me how to